Happy Friday, Niagara Graffiti. Thanks Yay. for <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Niagara Graffiti with Sean and Tim. My buddy Tim is um <laughs> in Philly. His skateboard broke down. We will he will be joining us next Friday. <laughs> but this week, um we are joined in the studio by Jackson, yeah. the wonderful Wizard of Vox, Peter Green. Now and out here in the co-host seat. I, yes. I feel like I'm Tim all of a sudden. Yeah, uh, Maybe yeah. I should be eating something, do you think? Like At have least a something sub. dripping off your fingers. Yeah, but have a sub. Yeah, it's, and, and like a big plate of uh, fried, mushrooms fried mushrooms and stuff. Yep. And Constantly then Jackson try. could be handed like 10 things of food. That's awesome. Offering it to everybody that comes by as you dig <laughs> <laughs> grab another one i love tim though it's oh favorite. he's awesome to me um, let's also congratulate tim on another grand baby uh Yay. a bouncing baby girl was it a girl? it was a girl right um yes i felt like I, I looked at it i even congratulated on him for some reason it slipped my mind i'm sorry buddy um Speaking of slipping, it was his transmission that went in his, his skateboard. Your slip is showing, yeah. Uh, we are being functioned tonight by our wonderful technical producer, Dustin, in the back. Yeah, you there, Dustin? Yes, I'm here. Uh, he's like the voice you. of God, isn't it? Yes, it's like a cross between Fergie and Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were supposed to have a guest tonight, but he got called into work, which is completely understandable. Uh, our guest tonight was... Niagara Falls firefighter Earl Bass. Right. This might be. Um, let's see if this is our guest. We have a phone call. Hang on one second here. Who's on the line? Welcome to Niagara Graffiti. Hi, Peter. It is Crystal. We haven't even got to your part yet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You know what? I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm calling you early because. I have to go grocery shopping to make six pounds of mac and cheese for my friend's house party before we leave in the morning. I that know. Perfect, so. No worries, no worries. No, <laughs> let's bring up, um, yeah, we're just going to bring up some information, but uh, take it over to Sean for a moment to introduce you, welcome you to the show. Welcome, Crystal. Uh, everybody, this is Crystal Ann, the host of Glass Roses, and we're glad that she called in because we've never had a, well, you would be our second call. I think our first call was Sam from uh, Your Community Accountability, but- I'm glad you called in because I yeah. hear that you have a, a event that you're doing tomorrow with the uh, Nickel City Pinup Dolls. Yes, thank you so much for having me call. It's an honor to finally meet you and be on the show. Sam's well. a man. <laughs> I appreciate um, you. Yes, yes, likewise. Um, yeah, the Nickel City Dolls, they're awesome. They're, they're just some bad Irish chicks, and they invited me to come live broadcast their show and also be one of the judges for their pinup contest. They are doing a feed more for Western New York. They are trying to collect food to feed the families of Western New York. You know, we all have problems with COVID. Some of us, you know, are having trouble finding employment or, you know, enough money to feed our family. So these wonderful ladies are getting dressed up to lift everyone's spirits. There's going to be a motorcycle bike show. There's going to be a car show. Um, they're going to be the pin up contest first one ever. It's going to be a good time for everybody of any age. It's in Irving, New York. I think Peter has the exact details. Yeah, I'll give that in a little bit. Go ahead. It's just going to be great, man. Come down. I'm dressing up. You know what? Oh, you got, I have to say, uh, Crystal got a new dress today. I was going to say, um, yeah, my she team. looks like she actually belongs with, with oh, Nickel City. I'll have to show oh, you that you. picture. She Because I was saying it, like, the first time I seen, um, well, I, we recently just added each other. Um, and yeah. I, I actually assumed that you were because... You were taking pictures with them at the, at the Summerfest at the sale, and it didn't it didn't dawn on me. I was like, oh, and then I'd ran it by Peter. Is Crystal Ann the girl that runs, you know, she's the host of Class Rose? He said, yeah, yeah. I said, oh. You know, I was thinking in my head that you were actually one of the Nickel City pinup girls. <laughs> well, that's a compliment. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the, the story there was that, I have to tell you, Crystal uh, was with me in the booth. We sat up uh, at the uh, Summerfest, mm -hmm. and Crystal was there for about 40 minutes with me and then had a family event to go to. But she looked up and saw the Nickel City dolls walking around selling raffle tickets. So she jumps up and goes and gets them and brings them back to interview them. And it was love at first sight between the two, between Crystal and the Nickel City doll. She fits right in. And so Crystal now, thanks to our uh, production budget here, we, we have a new dress that she'll be wearing tomorrow. You'll catch her live on Glass Roses. 
Um, probably she'll be doing the pinup contest at two o'clock, but earlier than that, than that, she'll probably around eleven o'clock start broadcasting from there, and on the Glass Roses page, and we'll share it around on our other pages. Oh yeah, I'll here. share it. Too. I'll share it definitely. Yeah, on my yeah, page. definitely. If you guys want to donate some food, like please, like we need to pull together as a community, mm-hmm. not just Niagara County but Western New York. I mean, I know not everyone has it, but you've got extra cans of food laying around. Even if you don't want to go out there, if somebody wants to bring it to the studio or to Peter or to yourself. Before tomorrow, like, I will come get it, and I will drop it off. It could be anonymous, whatever. I need a little bit of help. You know, these ladies are going above and beyond to try to do this, so we could give them a little bit of encouragement, you know? Oh, yeah, and, and they're always out there. I've seen them at a lot of events. Aren't Ken, you cooking Ken, for one of their events? Ken, Kenny actually loves um, – um, I am cooking for uh, hands, hands Helping Heroes. Oh, yes, we'll show September, up a graphic of that in a little while, 25th. yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely. Is that for veterans? Yes, yes. Oh, um, anything I can do to help, let me know. I'm it, all about that. Come uh, up that day. It's going to be right out there uh, outside the NAC Center on uh, uh, Portage and Pine. Yeah, we kind of know okay. that place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, just a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah. It, mo- most, can we most, bring our own porta bodies? No, anyway. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's the NAC Center. I don't think you're going to change the smell of it by pissing <laughs> on the floor. Oh, it's so grunge. Oh, oh. it's a word. I, 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 I actually, I, I was the um, poll inspector there for, for two, three elections. So I was right next to the, the door underneath the front steps. It was definitely a, a, a lovely. A poll inspector. I thought you meant a dance, Can I just dance say, club. Like, you guys have it easy. You just have to stand and pee. Like, I was close to the squat. And that stuff comes back up and splash. No. It's gross. It, 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 it doesn't work like that. I've watched Step Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> I watched. Oh, Step Dustin, you know those buttons too well. <laughs> he he hit that right on time too. Yeah, he's, he's good. definitely definitely. You're welcome. Awesome. <laughs> What's awesome. up, Dustin? I love Dustin. He's a man. He is. He's he a is. great. He's got a job now. He's working at the uh, at the Regal Cinema here in Niagara Falls. Oh, that's a fun job. That's a job. You'll be able to go in and watch most of the movies, or you work in the concessions. Uh, both. I, I do get free movie tickets though, so. Okay, that's enough of Dustin for now. We've had. I mean, keep me in mind. <laughs> I need a mom's night out. Okay, so you wanna? Uh, we're gonna put that the flyer up. But would you run by it again? Exactly uh, what's going on and who's gonna be there tomorrow for us? Real quick? Sure, there's gonna be the Nickel City Dolls. Uh, that's for sure. There's going to be a bunch of um, veterans from the Korean War and from I think Afghanistan. A couple other things. Prisoners of War families. They're doing. Some kind of raffle for that. I don't know the exact details. I have to, it's up on the page. They're also doing a collecting the food for families in Western New York. There's going to be a car show. And then at 2 o'clock, there's going to be the first ever annual pinup contest. And it's going to be fun. Like these ladies are so vibrant. They're so full of life. They bring so much energy and smiles. Like it's just going to be a great time. Come out, say hi, stop by the booth. You know, bring Hope your for Crystal is your favorite doll. Yes, definitely vote for Crystal. <laughs> And they, they do love what they do. They love they they love the time that they get to spend for for doing charity for their uh, veterans' causes. Which it's is such a, a classic part around. of American fe- female history. Is that women look so beautiful in that era? Mm-hmm. The clothes really flattered them being real women. Yeah. And uh, and tonight the boys' mom, uh, Dustin's mom, G- uh, G- Jennifer, came in and she saw your picture in the dress, uh, Crystal, and and you look. And that was just a quick po- picture you took in the mirror, and uh, we can't wait to see the whole on the whole ensemble. But uh, I think it's it, it's such a beautiful experience because it's not based on mm-hmm. um, it's sexuality, so to speak. It's no, not it's risque. There's no lingerie, it. things like that. It's yeah, it's based yeah. on how you dress and how you present it, yourself. It always reminds me of the movie Cry Baby. Yeah. When yeah, I see them. Yeah. Oh yeah, I got. I'm definitely, I definitely got a bunch of '80s movies, and that's in my my stack of movies. Okay. That we have at home. Uh, yeah. And, and whenever I, you know, think about that era, I, I remember one time I was trying to pitch somebody to try to remember the um, diner in um, Pulp Fiction. Yes. You know something like yeah. that here. If you had That'd all the, so dope. if if you had a bunch of like uh, wait staff that were dressed up like Monroe Tesla. James Dean, people that came yep. here and, and were prominent here, I think that would be a, a wonderful addition. That's a to the great city. idea. I think that would get the community and a lot of attraction involved. You oh, know, yeah. I, I, I would I would work there. I would cook for it. I would definitely help somebody out that wanted to start that kind of business. That but, would be. So cool. I would love you to come on my show when you have the time as our honored guest. 
Hey, I definitely, definitely would love to do that. Um, I'll even leave my number five home. I don't usually bring him on the other shows, even though he's a, <laughs> he's a wonderful kid. But yeah, I would love to my come buddy. on. Buddy, come on! He's he's being so good tonight. He knows he there's an ice cream drumstick waiting for him when it's all oh, over. Peter's got so, your ice cream drumstick. If he's good, right? And this, he's always so good. This so. is what he was drawing. <gasps> oh, that's so cool. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. One thing about my kids is they're very, they love, they love people. Did you say you have five? Huh, yeah. This is number, this is Jackson. He's my fifth child. I have five too. <laughs> no, no. He's the, he's the fifth. Here's he's, the story. He's five of six. Of a man named oh. Sean. And uh, I, his name is Jackson. <laughs> his name is Jackson, my fifth child. So I call him Jackson five or number five for a uh, oh, really yeah. short. Very nice. Yeah. It works. I, I numbered all of them and actually, you know, answer when I called one. Is two, that three, just four, because you forget their names? No, no, I'm, I actually named them all. So uh, you do what I do, and I'm sure Crystal does it, where you go through the whole gamut, like Abby, Leah, Maddie. Oh no, I do that often. I'll, yeah. I'll go my my youngest, every day. Yep, number six is probably my nightmare child. That's, that's he's two. He, I'm, we're already building up his bail fund, <laughs> but. Because I'm, oh, so, my used, Lanta. I'm so used to being with number five all the time, I'll look at Aries, which is number six, and be like, hey, Jackson, I mean, Aries, you know, or <laughs> run through it. Jackson, Alex, Jasmine, Aries, damn it. Yeah, that happens a lot. Man. But that being said, good luck tomorrow. Thank um, you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Most importantly, have fun. And to all of our viewers, all four of you out there, I believe. <laughs> I don't know. Let's, if you have any canned goods or any kind of you know perishable items that laying around, um, inbox one of us either on Niagara Graffiti, my personal page, or message Glass Roses, and uh, maybe we can arrange. Maybe even if if it's after the event, if people can bring by, we could yeah, still there create is someone still we can drop it off to. Absolutely, yeah. Crystal absolutely. has made that a part of her show since she started in January. Um, oh, yeah. It was so funny because. Um, some twerp uh, said Peter Green was at uh, in Washington on January sixth when they oh, yeah. At, oh, yeah exactly oh, yeah. but uh, they they said I was in Washington where was I at a production meeting with Crystal in Lockport with me yeah <laughs> yep and oh. French onion soup and, and, barb. Yeah. and barb. Bar Ohio Barb was there. And um, she uh, she started the show with the idea of being able to collect things that families needed. Mm -hmm. So we're always behind that. And the inspiration behind her show, the person she pays most tribute to is her friend Lindsay, who passed away unexpectedly in March mm -hmm. after doing uh, about a half dozen of the shows with us. So um, Lindsay wanted that as well, was spearheading that. So they do a lot of it with Glass Roses. Get it to us, and we'll get it to the people. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, and like I said, if anybody has anything that they, that they no longer need that can go to a family in need, by all means, contact one of the pages. Oh, well, there's also the Magdalene House in Niagara Falls that will take any yes. donations of women's clothing. Um, I do Joanne a lot of them Yes. Uh, Christmas, you're always taking anything, like little bedding, sheep, I mean, anything. If anyone has anything they want to get rid of, forget the Salvation Army, donate it to a women's shelter, donate it to the Magdalene House, donate it to the kids' shelter. I mean, places like that need it more than the Salvation Army, oh, yeah. who really is upcharging trying to make a book out of it. Oh, and Carolyn's house is right on, on 6th Street. Um, yep. I used yep. to be the executive chef over oh. there at Carolyn's house, and... Uh, and helped. I was a sous chef. Helped train classes over at the the white. That's ABC awesome. So commendable. Yeah, yeah. I did it for work. <laughs> well, I know, but you probably had intentions. Cheering your heart. You wouldn't did it anyway. Give yourself some credit. I don't like people. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. I, I enjoyed working there, um, and I, I like working at places where they 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 look at the softer side and the, the compassionate side and. I just, for some reason, I can't ever muster them kind of emotions. But I love organizations that, that come together and do things for other people selflessly. You know, like the Nickel City Dolls, Pin of Dolls, like I said, they're always at some kind of function. And it's always a function that has a good purpose behind it. Mm -hmm. But that being said... Again. Yeah, I want to thank you guys for calling me. And I'm sorry, I have to go to Walmart and shop today. I make six pounds of macaroni and cheese. For my friend's son's graduation party that I have to drop off at seven thirty in the morning before the spin up contest. 
You have All an right. awesome time. I'll see you in the morning, Crystal. We'll be ready <laughs> to roll. All right, love you guys. Thank you so you're much. You're welcome. Have a great Thank evening. you. Thank you for calling. Have a see good you night. tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. Bye. Bye bye. That was a pleasant surprise. Well, I know. I, I, I said surprise like we didn't arrange. it. <laughs> no, well, we, we she came out came on last minute for us when our guest canceled yes. out. So it was kind of a surprise because we'll she did come on, on earlier than yeah. expected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. That was great. No, she's got a lot to do. And five I, that's kids. A, that that's a great cause. You What's know, this definitely. five kids thing? You've got five kids. Dustin is one of five brothers. Um, she I thought has you were going to say kids. I had five kids. I have. I've got three. Three daughters. Let's see if I can go through it. There's one Barbara Brenda. Play Jeopardy. Still <laughs> Amy. Do, I have six. Do, I have five sisters. All right. And six brothers, I think. Uh, but I'm an only child oh, wow. between my mother and father. Oh, guess who's Uh-oh. calling in? Get the gra- get the uh, sound effect ready. Uh oh, Timmy. Hey, you're live on Niagara Graffiti on the Food Bank. What's up there, Timmy? Hey, Timmy. What's going on, buddy? Oh, wait, wait, Tim. I was going to say, man. There it is. How's that? His phone blew a transmission. Tim, give us your signal. Hello? What? There he is. There he is. What's up, buddy? Uh, I'm just riding in the back of my savior, Jason Whitmer's truck. Right. He uh, went to this conference with us, and uh, thankfully he stopped for lunch after we left the uh, conference. So he was a little behind me, and I was in stop and go traffic in Philadelphia, and transmission line blew out, and the transmission didn't want to go. So I called AAA and did it for a little while, and I got a hold of Jay, and I said, "Hey, can you get a trailer for me?" So I rented a U-Haul trailer, and he picked it up and picked me up, and we're on our way. The rest is mystery. That's Where awesome. are you right now? Uh, Jay, where are we at? We're still in Pennsylvania, right? Yeah. You going We're up? still somewhere in the mountains of Pennsylvania. Yeah, you going up the Lehigh Valley, yeah, go through the tunnel? Uh, we already went through the tunnel. Oh, I love yeah, that we're tunnel. Oh. What did you say, Jay? We're outside Scranton. We're right Uh-oh. outside oh. of Over by uh, Pennsylvania. Oh, oh, Joe's hometown. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. you're happy. To, that's that's, that's your hero's hometown. Maybe we week. should stop yes. and visit the coal mines, right? I think you should. I spent a week there one afternoon. They wouldn't know who it he is. <laughs> See Remember if the comments? still Dustin? a bad dude. Yeah. How we doing? Uh, let's get rid of Crystal. Oh, it's only Tim saying, sorry, I'm late. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay. We already licked our fingers clean, buddy. Yes, sir. We're excited to so have you back. How's uh, Mr. Jackson doing? I see he's doing some artwork. He is. Timmy said hello. Did you hear what he said? No, I didn't hear him. Oh, he's here. Say hi. Hi. It's Tim. Hi, Jackson. How you doing, buddy? You holding down the fort? He said, are you holding down the fort? Yeah. <laughs> you keeping them guys in line? Don't let them get out of line. Count on you. Say, I'm security. I'm security. Yep, he's the Bad bouncer. boy. He bounces everywhere. No, it's, uh, you know what, the little the little beast, or the clown car, as you guys have nicknamed it, <laughs> did good. I drove it from Niagara Falls to Jacksonville, Florida. Wow. Uh, and, my and granddaughter was supposed to, yeah, I made the Ohio trip the first uh, two days after I put the engine in mm-hmm. for that car show. But then uh, I went to Jacksonville. My granddaughter was been born a week ago Wednesday, but she <laughs> blessed us this Wednesday. I wasn't there, of course. I was in uh, Atlantic City, but... Uh, She's a healthy toddler. Mazel tov. She's probably <laughs> about as big as Jackson. She came out uh, 10 pounds, 11 and a half ounces. She oh, she's me. very and, uh, size. Yeah, she wow, came, she's bigger than me. She came out a full-grown-ass human. <laughs> she did as a toddler. And uh, I, I went uh, while I was in Atlantic City, and I bought her a onesie. And when she was born, I told my son, I said, we're going to take that back to see if we can get a twosie or a threesie because <laughs> that onesie is just not going to fit her. They're going to take her up to the landfill to weigh her. <laughs> oh, is- she is. But they said she's a very good baby. She doesn't, uh, she's not real fussy or anything yet. She's four days old. How fussy pictures. do you get? <laughs> well, Have I you met Tim? Have- Tim. Hey, the, uh, it's a good thing that she came out happy and healthy, though. That's, yes. That's yes. I, that was my big concern was mm-hmm. that they actually did have to induce her. She went in at 630 in the morning on Wednesday, and she was born at 11, 11 p.m. Nice. on Wednesday night. So she yeah. was in for uh, for a little haul. But uh, they are all home, and everything is good. The dogs are adjusting well to the baby, and 
I'll probably be back down there in a couple of weeks after I get the transmission line fixed in this car and do a little more uh, road testing around the area before I decide to take it. I, you know, I put almost 2,000 miles on this, on this thing in the last week and a half. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you definitely because, beat you that know, poor I, little car to death. Those rubber bands are just worn. Oh, <laughs> well, I had, to, I had to replace the battery because the battery had a dead cell, which was the battery that was in the car when I got it. But other than that, I mean, I did the engine. I did do the wheel bearings in it when I was at my son's house, but now I've got to do some rubber transmission lines that are probably original, 29 years old. So, but still, I mean, for what I've got in this car, I enjoy the car. That's cool. Nice little car. It's fun to drive. Gets a lot of looks. Do you wear a fez when you drive it? I you bet know? you. No, I bet but you, I should. I bet you it comes with tampons. Oh. <laughs> And that car comes with tampons. <laughs> a little roller. Right inside um, the glove well, box. No, I think he nice wears a fez about it, like, though, the, uh, like the Shriners do when they're going around their little cars. The nice thing about it, though, was when I got to Atlantic City, they had a designated area for small cars, and I fit in there, so yeah, it was good. <laughs> designated area for compact cars definitely is... Yes, it was uh, It was nice. There were some empty parking spots that were nice and close. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, and the other nice thing about it is... It's easy to push up on a trailer if you have to push it up. Well, and also, because... <laughs> if you want, if, if we ever, like, you know, got together and did, like, a Christmas parade, we could put, like, a little <laughs> make-believe windy up thing on there and turn it into, like, a toy car and <laughs> you could be, like, yeah. Yeah. Up, get him one of the little Shriner hats. And... Here, yeah, I'm going to get him one of these. I'm going to order well, you know, for him right today, away. Today, when it broke down, I was in stop-and-go traffic, and I was all the way over in the left lane. Now, this is a six-lane highway. And uh, when it stopped, I, I went to go, and cars started honking right away. And I just, I had the top down. I threw my hands up in the air. I'm like, the car's broke. I put on the hazard light, opened up the door, and I turned the steering wheel to the right, and I just pushed it right straight across the lanes of traffic. You know, thankfully, cars were stopping. But I pushed it across the lanes of traffic to get out of the middle of the road anyway. And then a state trooper from uh, Pennsylvania actually stopped and asked if I was okay. And then he told me, he says, get in, put it neutral. And he pushed me up into a little... The little triangle where you get oh, on the on ramp. Oh, that's awesome. So that yes. way I was out of the traffic. But then I sat there for three and a half hours, four hours, three rainstorms. It had pretty good downpours came down, but I had my umbrella in the trunk, so I was. You were doing good. weather forecasts. Oh well, man, I'm shit. telling you, all you had to do then was get inside the car and float away. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> Listen no, ninety-four all over degrees again. today. No air conditioning, and it was raining. No, I couldn't roll the windows down. In my down, day, man. we didn't have electricity. You're, Come you're on. big, too, so you know you were sweaty. It didn't, it rain, oh, didn't yes. It clothes sticking to you. It That's was, a gross thought. It was it's probably rain like sitting inside of good. a smokehouse. <laughs> a sauna. Like we were, we were in a sauna. <laughs> but I am on my way. Like I said, my buddy Jay came to my rescue, thankfully, and... Uh, Oh, he's a we good got man. a U-Haul trailer, yes. and uh, yeah, we're we're cruising down. Can I suggest something? When you get back, pull it up in front of Chris Baccio's house. Oh, we could man. do that. <laughs> it, it's a car well, hauler trailer, still, though. It's not a, a box trailer. We thought. still got a few months before that. Um, uh, 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 <laughs> November second. Yeah, I was about to say we got about a month and a half before that happens. Right? November second. Trust me, I got the date circled. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> yeah, he's already got he's oh. already got the down payment. He's got the retainer on the U-Haul form. <laughs> I already got the reservation in. <laughs> All right. All right, All right buddy. Fellas, so you will I'm be here with us. Go. I just wanted to give you a little progress report. I'm going to be sitting back and making some comments and see if we can keep it interesting. That sounds great. Uh, what you, happened to Earl Bass? Yeah. I thought he was supposed to be on tonight. Earl got called in to work at the last minute, which, I mean, he's a firefighter, so I could not, you know, Oh, no, you can't bad. argue with it. Definitely Check out David's not. comment. I wouldn't anyways. I, I love Earl. He, he's one of my heroes, and I, I honestly, sincerely mean that. Um, yeah. David's asking what happened to the car. I think he tuned in late. He, he blew a, a, a plastic uh, <laughs> hose inside his... Uh, the, his the bearing on the can, the hamster wheel actually seized up, so... Oh, man. No, it's just a transmission I, line. They should just send a drone and lift Sharon it up. Sharon the guinea pig died. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Get an RC remote. <laughs> But it's all good, you know. It'll be back on the road tomorrow. I'm thinking, and uh, I got the weekend to fix it up. And I, I told you, if you go ahead and if you record it, we'll put it on the page. And your award is helpful. in our window. Yes, your award is here. 
You have to grab people, that when you People come back walking by are stopping going, wow, do they make clown cars here? Look at them. Look at that little, little car right there. That's a, that looks that's like a toy. My son would love because, that. You know exactly that. That's, that's exactly how they sound out here in Lace They sound really, really uh, ransom village. <laughs> The best was when I went to that car show in Ohio and I looked at the guy when I was registering. I'm like, you guys got any of these here? The guy looked at the car, looked at me, and says, what the hell is it? <laughs> That's the best reaction I think I've gotten so far. One of them people, eh? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good show, and I will uh, talk to you all probably tomorrow when I get back. Uh, good to you. Drive Sounds safe. Good, buddy. Yeah. And thanks, your buddy, uh, Jason. Well, yeah, well, tell yes, me sir. appreciate we'll him and reach out to us when you get back home. All right, buddy? All righty. We'll right. do. See you when you get back. All right. Bye. Right, bye bye. Bye bye. Bye, Jackson. <laughs> that was wonderful of Timmy to call us. Timmy, my good buddy. Uh, yes, yeah, so he'll be back in the studio with us next week. Um, you know, we tease him about things, but the man has the biggest heart in the world. Yes, yes, the biggest, definitely. Um, his heart is definitely equal to his weight, and that is a big ass heart. Yes. And so, <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> But he'll be back in the studio with us next week when we have Miss Miss Colleen Miss Colleen Ligamari is Oh, on. excellent. We have Miss Ligamari on and we'll talk about her campaign and see how that's she going. She stopped in with us at Summerfest. She was yes. great. She is very down to earth. Yes. Um I, I I do have some questions to ask, I you know, but as far as that goes, I really like her as a as a person. Um and the one thing I want to point out about this show is that we, we don't intend on trying to create this um this sway for people to say oh well i'm gonna you know he's gonna vote I, i'll never tell you who to vote for but if, if you ever you i'll ask questions we we all will ask questions if you've ever watched tim in a- action tim is great when it comes to asking these candidates questions mm-hmm. and it's always good to watch when you have a candidate on um but yes we're looking forward to having miss ligamari on next week yeah she was a pleasure with the summer fest i think she'll be great on this show with you guys yes definitely um and i've, I've talked to her we, we we sat outside a council meeting one time um out at the picnic table in the back and had a really down-to-earth conversation for about a good solid hour you know and she wanted to we, she originally went to go to the council meeting but we just both figured fuck it we're not gonna go and <laughs> We're just going to sit out here and talk. And then, Sometimes the best communication is done that way. Yeah, it was really productive. It was really, really productive. Um, and I actually lent her two books. Bring my books back. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> when you come back. If you're done reading them, I lent her a book uh, by one of my personal favorite heroes, uh, uh, Cormac Russell. He's a, he's one of the developers of uh, asset-based community development. Irishman, wonderful guy. Uh, his, his, an Irish accent is the coolest accent oh, in the I world know. to me. You get, uh, the, it's you absolutely get, lifting. Yes, yes. Um, you could probably drive by my house sometimes in the summer and hear bagpipes playing out of my window. And That'd be Scots. I mean, That'd be great. Look at yes, that yes, Scots. That, that's what it is. The Celties. Oh, anything Celtic. Oh, my grandmother used to walk there. We used to go over to the, the Royal, uh, Royal Canadian Legion, and they'd be in there with their little kilts on. And Let me tell you, these old women... Had this cane with a mirror on the bottom of it, with a rear view mirror <laughs> on the bottom of it. And they would go around and there was a little horn. And if one of the Kelties wasn't wearing drawers, they would beep that horn. <laughs> old women are weird and nasty. Oh, but, yeah. yeah. They're fearless, actually. <laughs> and it's weird because old men get in trouble for it, but old women just, they get Yeah, away we do it, something like that. We're, you know, we get arrested. Then. Far beyond Kruger. Not that I would do that. Uh, old and ugly. They, yeah, exactly. They are. <laughs> Some. I love yeah. old people. Oh, um, I, I like, yeah, people who've lived. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, because they have that life experience, and you really can't tell somebody with that kind of wisdom. You shouldn't anyways. You know, somebody that's 80, 90 years old, you shouldn't try to tell them shit. No. Really, because they've lived through way more than any of us ever. My dad was 95 when he passed last year, and <laughs> I remember he, he paraphrased a joke I once heard, and I said, he said, what's the best part of life? And he says, no peer pressure. <laughs> 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 oh, that's so cool! Yeah. So, um, so you were, uh, so you were expecting Mr. Bass to be on. I was too. I mean, we had a bunch of questions for him, didn't we? We did. You did, and I was going to um, just be in the control room. There, there. You know, and it, we are going to reschedule that. Uh, Mr. Bass said that he would love to reschedule. Uh, we're going to reschedule for a date that it's at his earliest convenience. So, right. if um, it pops up, you know, hopefully we get him out here 
um, the 24th or whatever, because I think we actually have people in the studio yeah. or we're going to be live. Um, September 10th, we're yes, live? Yes, yes, I actually. That's you see the bu- the banner we ordered? Yeah, oh yeah, I have to hang it up there. Oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah you see how important I am around Niagara Vox? Listen, I, I helped d- him hang the sign I up. I don't remember. You it. believe this, Dustin? Uh, yeah, he does, he does. <laughs> Dustin's awesome. Yes, he is. Wonderful, wonderful individual. Very quiet. You know, you kind of figured to hear him giggling back there. I've oh, not heard him laugh. You got to meet his brother. You haven't one met of his, me then. No? Yeah, his brother is a corpse, <laughs> Julian. Oh, I mean, he's so quiet all the time. And then all of a sudden they explode. You know, it, you it, guys should hang around with Jackson because I wish his ass would be quiet sometimes. The funny know, thing with Julian is, is when we I first joke. met Peter, uh, a lot of it was us talking for Julian. <laughs> yeah, we t- we always talked for Julian. Yeah, yeah. You guys did, yeah. Oh. That's One day funny. I had to say to Julian, do you have a voice? Like, are you, like, do you speak? <laughs> Start singing. And well, all three of know, them, my- uh, Dustin, Cole, and Julian, are the absolute superb. Like, I mean, I'm not worried about a thing here. D- Dustin runs it like yeah. anybody. Uh, he does, he like does great. 35-year-old pro. Dustin's in there, sixteen years old. I was kind of looking yeah. forward to that, showing Mr. Bass what one of the students of his school system does. Yeah, yeah, and then we'll have to get Dustin in here when when Earl it comes on the show, you know. And that's kind of a lot of, like my brother too, which are, like your brother, you know, real quiet, and other people kind of do his uh, his 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 um, vocalizing for him, you know. But my little brother the same way, but he's an overachiever, you know, great guy, truck driver, really, really loving, really caring guy. Awesome, but. An absolute psycho. If you if you hurt somebody in his family, you'll never ever you vote unleash the gates of hell, my brother. And he's like I said, the biggest marshmallow loving kid I've ever seen. But that's how them quiet ones are. Quiet ones are definitely the psychopaths. Um, let me point out tomorrow at, at ten a.m. My friend John Campbell is um. Hosting a free back to school clothing giveaway over at A Free Helping Hand. It's located um right there on the corner of uh 18th and Whitney where it the it comes to the, you know, T in the road, you have to go left or right. Right. Um, seventeen forty five Whitney Avenue. Yes, yeah, seven yep, seventeen forty five Whitney Avenue. The the thing that he posted actually gave the wrong time. It says ten PM, but he, <laughs> he went in and tried to change it and wouldn't let him change oh, it. Oh bummer. Ten AM um, though, right? Yeah, it's ten AM. They and they have tons of stuff. If you can stop by there, um even if it's to stop by and, and maybe help out or see what you can get, maybe you can find something that you don't have to go in spend that extra money on and put it towards school shoes or, you know, the extra supplies that the kids need. Amazing what a, a random $20 in our pocket can do for a young family struggling oh, yeah, to get their kids going. Definitely. And even that, if you if anybody wanted to go by there and, and maybe drop off some supplies, I was considered doing that. Um, I don't know. I might still try. Melissa, I didn't know tomorrow the Bills were playing Green Bay. Yeah. And Melissa's going to the game. Wow. So I actually forgot. I, I'm i sorry. I love football. I, I absolutely adore football. But I'm a Baltimore Ravens fan, and I can't stand the Bills. You know, so. Tell us how you really feel. Well, <laughs> I wrote the environment bill. I got them the money. No, she's, um, <laughs> she's going to see it, and. I'm glad. I love it when Melissa gets to go out and do these things. She went to go see Dane Cook. She bought us both tickets, nice. and then she had a friend that wanted to go with her, and they got to go. Um, she's going. She's taking a friend tomorrow for her birthday. Happy birthday, Jackie! Um, and it's her birthday present, and she got family coming in, so they're going to go see it. Um, Melissa was actually born in Wisconsin, so she's a big Green Bay. Um, I'm just not going to. I love you, babe. Um, <laughs> she's a huge Green Bay fan. But that being said. Um, go Bills, um, because I'm not a Green Bay fan. But let's go about talk about yesterday. Um, my background, as you can see, is the the mural that is painted on the side of the um, the wine on Third, right there on the corner of of Third and Ferry. Jackson said he's a Green Bay fan. We have to keep his mic muted because he he goes off in his little tangent, but. Yesterday, right there on um, Thursdays on 3rd, we went down and we caught Nerds Going Wild as they came out doing their first song. 
first song was Wang Chung. Um, yeah, I saw that. You posted that. It looked yeah. good. good audio, too. It was. And we were really close. Jackson was standing there like this, you know, with his hands <laughs> over his ears and pretty much begging, Dad, can we go home? It's just too loud. And I was like, let me get the rest of this. At least one video. You know, I didn't walk all the way down here for no reason. But we ended up going back, and halfway back, he was like, Dad, I want to go and dance. You know, no, you don't do it. We didn't even stop. But... They did a phenomenal job. Third Street was packed last mm-hmm. night. Um, I seen Niagara Falls City Council candidate Jim Perry post a picture, and it splits right through the crowd and shows. It was a really, really well taken picture. Nice. But Third Street looked packed. Um, the mayor, um, Assembly Memoir and LO was there. I actually almost um, confused Mr. Pat. Proctor is is one of the nerds gone wild. Yeah, um, he looks like it, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, he, he kind of came bouncing by and walked over to the little their little retail, their little merch tent, and walked back. And I was, I realized that just as he was walking up on us, because I, you know, his little his little face was more clear with all the people around. But it was great to see everybody out there. It was definitely I've seen pictures of Kenny out there. And there was a lot of people. Um, That's me. Yes, I can. This is how I tell Dustin as he's searching that there's no graphic for what you're saying. We couldn't, um, we didn't link the video in, in time, but it's on Facebook and you can see it. Yeah, I actually posted it on our uh, Niagara Graffiti page. Right. So if you know, it's, it's like a four, four minute and 41 second video of uh, Wang Chung start to finish. You know, Everyone and, have, have fun tonight. Yep. And hey, if we have more stuff like that, because that's something that can be done year round. You, we we can go live at it, and we can oh, yeah. contact the organizers. Oh yeah, and um, I believe that was put together by the people that that own the craft. And yeah, Bill their, Alexia, he's a yeah, good guy. And uh, and it was a collaboration between them and the city. You know, if the city can cut that kind of bureaucracy, that will for something like that, we could probably see more of them things happening rather than just one here and there every now and then you know it's funny we talked about um and i know it was a question you're gonna i possibly ask mr bass tonight was that at summerfest the lack of sitting city leaders showing up last night did you see a lot of current city leaders i seen a lot of leaders as far as pictures go that well i've seen i've seen judge uh assemblyman morinello i've seen angelo there i've seen the mayor was there at one point kenny was there I didn't see the rest of them. No, and at the same time, the candidates, sometimes I think events like that mm-hmm. are, are best not made into political ve- uh, vehicles. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's like that's the time that, ca- that, that the community should just dance together. Yeah, and uh, it's nice to see them there mingling, you know, having mm-hmm. a beer with people, but I don't really like seeing them there campaigning. No. You know, I, if I'm there with the kids, I... I the worst thing that you could ever do is try to campaign to me when I'm trying to enjoy my time with my kids. Right. You know, or, or really talk to me if I'm like, if I'm in a restaurant eating, don't say shit to me, you know, cause there's the, I don't, the time in those, in those situations, the time that you got is very precious. And I don't think a lot of people realize how precious that time is. You know, they, they probably should with the events over the last couple of days that have happened and realize how much, our freedom and, and, and enjoyment we take for granted. When, yeah. You know, we just lost 12 U.S. Marine Corps and one Navy. The medic, yeah. And the one Navy uh, Navy corpsman, you know, which is tragic because I think that that's going to open up Pandora's box again. Um, but uh, God rest their souls, prayers to their mm-hmm. families. Um, going back to the, the Thursdays on Thirds, they were really, they were really well put together. It was an interesting mix. I guess I should expect it with the nerds going wild thing. I've never seen them. I've never seen them firsthand. I've no. never seen them myself. No, they, they're, uh, they're, they're family entertainment. They're colorful. Mm-hmm. They're energetic. So yeah. they're, a, they're a great draw for an event like that. They Definitely. said they had a huge crowd down. Where it's, was it Tonawanda? A couple yeah. Weeks oh, ago? like eight thousand people. Yeah. I heard had had sit down there. Please sit down, baby. Um. One thing that I did want to bring up to Mr. Bass that I'm going to that I am going to bring up right now um because I do want to touch on it pretty much in every show is um the question I had for Mr. Bass is he had posted a comment a couple months back and this is 
pertaining to the resolution that Kenny put up, the resolution itself is actually resolution 2019-79. It is a surcharge on state on state amenities. Um, I think it was like five or it was, if I'm not mistaken, he wanted to put a twenty dollars surcharge on buses, a couple dollars on um, on the parking, two dollars on the maid of the mist, stuff like that. You know, which isn't isn't unreasonable. Um, but what it's going to take is, and I want to put the name, I want to put the um, addresses up on the page after the podcast, but the people that we need to contact to get this pushed through are going to be Assemblyman Morinello. Um, you got a bunch of paper. Stop. Uh, Assemblyman Morinello, Senator Robert Ort, um, Tim Kennedy, I think, is the counterpart of, of Senator Ort for the area. He's a Democratic mm-hmm. uh, person, a senator on our side. Um, the mayor, you know, and this is something that, that's going to continue to be brought up. So I would love for you to put a comment down below. Um, even if I have to come to you personally, we're going to start a petition this week and we're going to get as many signatures as possible. And try to get this to happen because i really really think that i don't want to speak for earl but i think that getting a surcharge a not only would bring money to the city but the city's not the only thing that was affected by the loss of the the casino revenues also the school district was Mm -hmm. you know and and you know earl bass is not only a niagara falls firefighter he's also uh, a Niagara Falls school board yep. member, you know, so that that was where bringing Earl in, you know, was was going to kind of put things together. But we are going to get Mr. Bass on here at some point in time. I promise you that. I wanted to ask a question of him that t- ties back to something that came up in the last, uh, it came up a few years ago, um, maybe two years ago. There was a much publicized case of a Spanish teacher at Niagara Falls High School, beloved by her students. I met people who had her as a teacher, told me they really liked her. And um, she was basically fired from the school for the residency clause. Is that the one that they had investigators following around? Yeah. 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 And, and here we, at the time, the current mayor was on the school board, mm-hmm. and they upheld this uh, residency clause, but it's not upheld for the administrative uh, – uh, the city administrator, and they they say he used used to work for yeah. the city way back, but they're stretching it. Yeah, it, it, it is a stretch, and what they're going under is a grandfather clause that he was a, he was a, you yeah, know, was a resident a and a city employee. administrator in yeah. eighty four. Listen, that was, I was five years old in eighty four. <laughs> I you know twenty five. If I can't get my credit lowered over a twenty year period, then uh. He, he can't get that resident clause. I'm not going to. No, and, and that's one of the things I want to ask is how the school board might have felt about it, uh, particularly because they enforced this, and it was enforced by someone who then went very publicly to let his brother take over a position and gave the excuse he doesn't have to take a full salary. Mm. But um, regardless, I mean, it's just the ethics of this place. Yeah. And we bend so many rules for family and nepotism and, would, and things like that. It's just, it's horrible to see and then the teacher got canned with so much investigation mm-hmm. going on like all what did that achieve uh, yeah and it's spent, you know? it was a lot of money wasted just doing that investigation yeah. to prove that she actually had a residence here but her boyfriend or her fiance lived in buffalo and um yeah she was definitely her, her students loved her and that's one problem that i always have with certain things like that is First of all, education is much more important than politics. You know, I, in my view, we, we, we need teachers more than we need city councilmen. Well, look at Tim's comment there. You know, and, uh, well, you're right. You're, you're right. And that that's that's the good thing that I was saying about when, when Tim's here. He, he gets to ask them questions mm-hmm. that... You know, what about all these other individuals that are that are bending the rules or, you know, uh, playing grab ass with everybody else to get these special perks because of who they are, not what they are. You know, Don't play and, with that, um, Jackson. Jackson's going to have a, a hard time here pretty soon. Yeah, understandable. He's been great, though, hasn't he? Yeah, for the most part. He just... He, I, he's, he's How old is Jackson? Jackson's 
five. He yeah, like we like we April expect 25th. him to sit perfectly still for yeah, no, a he, long period of time. He's doing great. He's not great. going to. You, just, you hang in there, Jackson. We got ice cream. I'm for just you, thankful buddy. I've not looked over and seen him flipping anybody off or picking his nose. Wait, or, what? Yeah. <laughs> oh, the very first show, he was sitting in the back behind me, flipping off the camera. Oh yeah, yeah. You remember that, Peter? <laughs> he was he was flipping it off in the background. He, it's like having yeah, Brett back in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> he definitely has that kind of mouth. Jackson does. And you know what? I, I'm, for one, I can't really. I correct him on it. I correct him on it. I don't. I don't teach Jackson anything. Let me clarify. I. I have no filter. When I come on here, be happy. I don't speak like how I speak off of here because it's very, very bad. But, Jackson. Jackson. He does stuff like that, and. And then his ice cream melted yeah, in the it, freezer. In, in front of Boy, his eyes. Too bad. You know, so, but I, I try my best, you know, and they don't. Oh, it's great, though. He gets to see his dad doing something. Yeah, he engaging does. Engaging with people. And, 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 and if people see how he acts, they, they kind of understand that he doesn't get disciplined. He doesn't, you know, I don't spank him or nothing like that. So he does whatever he wants, but he gets corrected and it's a talking to, it's a lecture. Why he shouldn't do that. Right. Why he should show people respect, you know, or why he should give respect and then. That that that's in accordance with the respect that he gets. Um, one thing that before because it's seven fifty and we're running out of time. One thing I noticed the other day that um, Chantel across the street. Yeah. 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 Chantel. Owner of Maloney's. Yes, Chantel posted something the other day. She's selling um, sandwich platters for football days, and as we always like to do, uh, give Maloney's a shout out. If you guys want to get a, a a football game platter with this this weekend's games coming up stop in over and see her give her a call mm-hmm. and uh go ahead and set that up um it's so much healthier than fried food folks it, it is it yep. is and um especially with local people it, it's very important especially here especially now because the one thing that we are going to start seeing is, is tax increases obviously we've got to pay for all this crazy shit that's going on with um, Joe Biden, with uh, let me not say Joe Biden. I don't want people to turn me off just because I said that. With the inflation coming up, mm-hmm. but um, if you want to get over there and and support a local business, go and go and see uh, Chantella Maloney's at uh, eighty six sixty two Buffalo Avenue. The phone number is seven one six two zero five eighty five sixty four. Wonderful food. Tim absolutely loves it. Um, at least the first three shows, you can see him. No, we're cleaning it up off here all day. <laughs> yeah, I think. Uh, <laughs> no, I th- he's very clean over here. That's cool. He well, no, it, it was Jackson the one time. And I know. <laughs> with, the, with the damn sprinkles getting Janelle's birthday cake. But that's my buddy, Timmy. When he cut up that cookie, it was so much oh, fun to watch. He did it right in the middle, too. I, 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 <laughs> Wait, I, what? Jackson cut the cookie cake for uh, Judge Janelle. Oh. And uh, he cut out like a square right out in the middle for her. And then left the rest of it on the outside. Um, I am going to post that the the 20, 2019-79 resolution for um, that Councilman Tompkins put up. Excuse me. I'm just trying to find. I probably won't be able to. Um, now, I work in the tourism industry. I have for nearly 40 years. And just ask David Florio about me. <laughs> and when he, when he didn't realize that I was in it and connected as I was. And I've been an advocate of the bus, co- the coach costs, uh, a coach permit fee um, since I moved to the U.S. Because these coaches come off the highway. They Some of them go straight to the casino. They make no impact on us in terms of nope. they don't buy fuel here. They don't because they might buy it at the Seneca location, but they're not fueling up here. They're not um, buying meals here. Everything is taken care of by the casino to draw in gamblers. And so the buses alone going to the casino are impacting our streets. The weight of the buses does impact negatively. Mm. And we've got um, other buses that cut through Niagara Falls. And this hasn't happened because of COVID now, but it will again, that these buses cut right through our city and go to the Rainbow Bridge yeah. and make a beeline across. And Or, or they, they they park all along Niagara Street yeah. right there next to the casino. Yep. And, and that that's also, at the time, there's, that's dangerous because there's people that yep. come out of the parking lots and 
you know, they got to kind of inch out in front of the bus, especially right there where that cross through on 7th yes. and Niagara going in. They do that all the time and people... Uh, well, with, the, with the coach industry, and that's the industry I've worked mm-hmm. in. I work with lots of coach companies that come up here. Oh, yeah. And um, I've talked to some of the owners about it, and not that I've done a massive uh, sort of poll of them, but I've spoken to a few company owners that I've, I've known over the years. And uh, if, if we offered amenities for drivers and things like good parking areas that were maybe patrolled by police yeah. at night, that would be a good trade-off. But... Uh, those buses on the Rainbow Bridge, what people don't realize is they make a beeline, they use up our streets, they weigh down on them, and mm-hmm. when they get on the bridge, they take up a heck of a lot of space they do. working their way across. And if you if you told those buses, look, stay off the city streets or pay the fee, or just go up the 190 to Lewiston. Now, they don't want to cross at Lewiston. They want to be right in Niagara Falls. Yeah. But if you want to do that, it's got to be worth something to you, 55 yeah, well, bucks or something like that. And it's very, what, he, what, he, what he's got written down is very reasonable. $5 for every motor vehicle. Oh, shit. $5 for every motor vehicle that parks in the state parking lot, $20 for the buses, and $2 for, for every ticket sold at the attractions. Maybe right. The missing cave wins. That's really not that much, you know. And, and, like that's been said several times, it's not hurting anybody. It's not taxpayers' money. The people that are coming here to spend that money are coming here with disposable cash with the intention of spending that money. Now, we don't have a lot of other stuff going on over here. But if so. the city had the revenue that could be generated from yes. Ken's proposal, we would have um, we would have the means to create more here and offer more stimulus. Mm-hmm. And remember, too, what Kenny's talking about is a parking fee. The buses yeah. don't... I'm afraid there's only a few companies that park in the state park. The rest of them, like you said, are up on Niagara yeah. Street or Second Street, and uh, or in that bus lot that's that's right across the street from um, um, the Wyndham. Yeah, yeah exactly. They, they, Which they is, pick that up a lot. Yeah, they that's the only place you see them. And of course, mm-hmm. coach travel hasn't returned yet. Um, September is actually getting busy for coaches, mm-hmm. but what, when you've got all these coaches using the city streets, they should pay a permit to enter the city streets. The mm-hmm. police see a, a bus. They uh, what they do in Canada is they look on. If you're on the Niagara Parkway, you better have your permit in the front window. Oh yeah, the police will stop you and then make sure you've got it. But when you have that, not even that's not even a parking fee. That's a permit fee. That'll limit the overage of of equipment using our streets. And make it more valuable for the buses that deserve to be here and are impacting. Because you can offer incentives. If your group eats at a local restaurant, you can waive the fee kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. You know, once you've got to Kind of get your parking validated. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's all it would take. And uh, then it, it, I think it would be a lot more palatable for the coach industry. Well, and I do too. And also the, the thing about the, the, the major thing about it to me is um, the simple fact is, is that we shouldn't be begging New York State for for cable scraps from our own money, you know, it, that's that's if they're coming through like you said, th- coming down Pine Avenue with the with the buses or tourists in general just sucking on the resources, then we should be getting something from that yeah, park. Yeah, absolutely. You know, because it's basically like you know letting somebody stay in our our apartment and, and sell drugs out of it, right? And us not getting no damn rent <laughs> money for it, you no. know. Uh, so there in the comments, uh, some people are asking about uh, the contest. The contest is the same one that we've been running. Um, Tim, I think we're at 121 right now. Um, the contest is the 500th like to to the Niagara Graffiti. So nobody page. wants to be a like because they won't be. You know, the I was thinking about that earlier, and this is what I was thinking about doing. We might have to change it up a little bit. We might have to say when we get to 500 likes, we'll do a draw. we'll do a draw on a random number. So we might be revamping it, you know, and that it also allows everybody that's already liked the page the opportunity to possibly be that, you know. So we yeah. we might go ahead and change that up. Um, I'll do the the graphics when I get home, uh, run it by you know me and you and Tim will talk about it and see if uh, what the best way to go about it is. Because I, I started thinking about it even when we get to close to five hundred. How the hell are we supposed to remember who the five hundred? What if ten people liked it at the same time? Yeah, of course, you know, I mentioned people probably unlike it. Yeah, it just, just well, I've had people tell me that. I'm just gonna unlike the page so I I, I could like it at five hundred. But we're only at like one twenty one, you know, which is cool. I, I appreciate everybody that's liked it. If uh, you've liked the content we have put out so far, trying my best, um, like, share, and subscribe. We are on YouTube. I, I, I'll upload those when I get back to the house. Um, 
and here very soon we will have it set up to where we can just go ahead and live stream on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, we've um, got a few things left to put up in the studio, but yep. And then we might we might even go ahead and do like um a super chat. No, I'm just I'm gonna say you know it might happen. We might see get enough going on where we can get you know a super chat going on people to ask certain guests certain customer, uh certain questions and those will be the ones that are focused but um the time is currently seven fifty nine. do you know where your children are one of them i have five others and i have no idea <laughs> but i wanted to end this uh episode on a a sad note i guess it'd be the best way to put it um loss of life is always tragic and we take it for granted when we sit at home and we're able to eat our microwave dinners and, you know, have the opportunity to view our families and not take that opportunity. And we don't take into consideration people that live in different areas that um, we can never understand what the hell they go through. You know, we got men and women out there, like I said before, my, my, my god brother, my brother, you know, one of my oldest friends just got promoted to a master chief. Thankfully, he's home. But the other day we lost 12 U.S. Marines and a U.S. Navy corpsman and 60 Afghanistanians. And we would like to send out our thoughts and prayers to them. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Niagara Graffiti. Have a great weekend.